Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, the 28th of August 1749 to 22 March 1832, was a German writer and statesman. His body of work includes epic and lyric poetry written in a variety of meters and styles, prose and verse dramas, memoirs, and autobiography, literary and aesthetic criticism, treatises on botany, anatomy, and color, and four novels. In addition, numerous literary and scientific fragments, more than 10,000 letters, and nearly 3,000 drawings by him are extant. A literary celebrity by the age of 25, Goethe was ennobled by the Duke of Saxe-Weimar, Karl August in 1782 after first taking up residence there in November 1775 following the success of his first novel, The Sorrows of Young Werther. He was an early participant in the Sturm und Drang literary movement. During his first ten years in Weimar, Goethe served as a member of the Duke's Privy Council, sat on the War and Highway Commissions, oversaw the reopening of silver mines in nearby Ilmenor, and implemented a series of administrative reforms at the University of Jena. He also contributed to the planning of Weimar's Botanical Park and the rebuilding of its Ducal Palace which in 1998 were together designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. After returning from a tour of Italy in 1788, his first major scientific work, The Metamorphosis of Plants, was published. In 1791 he was made managing director of the theatre at Weimar, and in 1794 he began a friendship with the dramatist, historian, and philosopher Friedrich Schiller, whose plays he premiered until Schiller's death in 1805. During this period Goethe published his second novel, Wilhelm Meister's Apprenticeship, the verse epic Hermann and Dorothea, and, in 1808, the first part of his most celebrated drama Faust, his conversations and various common undertakings throughout the 1790s with Schiller, Johann Gottlieb Fichter, Johann Gottfried Herder, Alexander von Humboldt, Wilhelm von Humboldt, and August and Friedrich Schlegel have, in later years, been collectively termed Weimar classicism. Arthur Schopenhauer cited Wilhelm Meister's apprenticeship as one of the four greatest novels ever written, along with Tristram Shandy. La Nouvelle Alloys and Don Quixote, and Ralph Waldo Emerson selected Goethe as one of six representative men in his work of the same name, along with Plato, Napoleon, and William Shakespeare. Goethe's comments and observations form the basis of several biographical works, most notably Johann Peter Eckmann's Conversations with Goethe. There are frequent references to Goethe's writings throughout the works of Georg Friedrich Wilhelm Hegel, Arthur Schopenhauer, Soren Kierkegaard, Friedrich Nietzsche, Hermann Hesse, Thomas Mann, Sigmund Freud, and Carl Jung. Goethe's poems were set to music throughout the 18th and 19th centuries by a number of composers, including Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Ludwig van Beethoven, Franz Schubert, Robert Schumann, Johannes Brahms, Charles Garnett, Richard Wagner, Hugo Wolf, Felix Mendelssohn, Hector Berlioz, Gustav Mahler, and Jules Massenet. Biography Early life Goethe's father, Johann Caspar Goethe, lived with his family in a large house in Frankfurt, then an imperial free city of the Holy Roman Empire. Though he had studied law in Leipzig and had been appointed imperial councillor, he was not involved in the city's official affairs. 38-year-old Johann Caspar married Goethe's mother, Katharina Elizabeth Textor. All their children, except for Goethe and his sister, Cornelia Friedrich Christiana, who was born in 1750, died at early ages. His father and private tutors gave Goethe lessons in all the common subjects of their time, especially languages. Goethe also received lessons in dancing, riding and fencing. Johann Caspar, feeling frustrated in his own ambitions, was determined that his children should have all those advantages that he had not. His great passion was drawing. Goethe quickly became interested in literature. Friedrich Gottlieb Klopstock and Homo were among his early favorites. 
He had a lively devotion to theatre as well and was greatly fascinated by pop-up shows that were annually arranged in his home, a familiar theme in Wilhelm Meister's apprenticeship. He also took great pleasure in reading from the great works about history and religion. He writes about this period. I had from childhood the singular habit of always learning by heart the beginnings of books and the divisions of a work. First of the five books of Moses, and then of the Aeneid and Ovid's Metamorphoses. If an ever-busy imagination, of which that tale may bear witness, led me hither and thither, if the medley of fable and history, mythology and religion, threatened to bewilder me, I readily fled to those oriental regions, plunged into the first books of Moses, and there, amid the scattered shepherd tribes, found myself at once in the greatest solitude and the greatest society. Goethe became acquainted with Frankfurt actors. Around early literary attempts, he was infatuated with Gretchen, who would later reappear in his Faust and the adventures with whom he would concisely describe in Dichtung and Wahrheit. He adored Charita's Meeksner, a wealthy worms trader's daughter and friend of his sister, who would later marry the merchant G. F. Schuler. Legal career Goethe studied law in Leipzig from 1765 to 1768. He detested learning age-old judicial rules by heart, preferring instead to attend the poetry lessons of Christian Furch to Gottgelert. In Leipzig, Goethe fell in love with Anna Katharina Schonkoff and wrote cheerful verses about her in the Rococo genre. In 1770, he anonymously released Annette, his first collection of poems. His uncritical admiration for many contemporary poets vanished as he became interested in Gotthold Ephraim Lessing and Christoph Martin Wieland. Already at this time, Goethe wrote a good deal, but he threw away nearly all of these works, except for the comedy Die Mitchaldergen, the restaurant tower Bach's Keller and its legend of Faust's 1525 barrel ride impressed him so much that our Bach's Keller became the only real place in his closet drama Faust Part 1. As his studies did not progress, Goethe was forced to return to Frankfurt at the close of August 1768. Goethe became severely ill in Frankfurt. During the year and a half that followed, because of several relapses, the relationship with his father worsened. During convalescence, Goethe was nursed by his mother and sister. In April 1770, Goethe left Frankfurt in order to finish his studies in Strasbourg. In Alsace, Goethe blossomed. No other landscape has he described as affectionately as the warm, wide Rhine area. In Strasbourg, Goethe met Johann Gottfried Herder. The two became close friends, and crucially to Goethe's intellectual development, Herder kindled his interest in Shakespeare, Ossian and in the notion of Volkspiesi. On 14 October 1772 Goethe held a gathering in his parental home in honor of the first German, Shakespeare Day. His first acquaintance with Shakespeare's works is described as his personal awakening in literature. On a trip to the village Sessenheim, Goethe fell in love with Friedrich Bryan in October 1770, but, after ten months, terminated the relationship in August 1771. Several of his poems, like Willkommen und Abschied, Sessenheimer Lieder and Heidenrollein, originate from this time. At the end of August 1771, Goethe acquired the academic degree of the Lizenziat in Frankfurt and established a small legal practice. Although in his academic work he had expressed the ambition to make jurisprudence progressively more humane, his inexperience led him to proceed too vigorously in his first cases, and he was reprimanded and lost further ones. This prematurely terminated his career as a lawyer after only a few months. At this time, Goethe was acquainted with the court of Darmstadt, where his inventiveness was praised. From this milieu came Johann Georg Schlosser and Johann Heinrich Merck. Goethe also pursued literary plans again, this time, his father did not have anything against it, and even helped, 
Goethe obtained a copy of the biography of a noble highwayman from the German Peasants' War. In a couple of weeks the biography was reworked into a colorful drama, entitled Gotts von Berlichingen. The work went directly to the heart of Goethe's contemporaries. Goethe could not subsist on being one of the editors of a literary periodical. In May 1772 he once more began the practice of law at Wetzlar. In 1774 he wrote the book which would bring him worldwide fame, The Sorrows of Young Werther. The outer shape of the work's plot is widely taken over from what Goethe experienced during his Wetzlar time with Charlotte Buff and her fiancé. Johann Christian Kessner, as well as from the suicide of the author's friend Carl Wilhelm Jerusalem, in it, Goethe made a desperate passion of what was in reality a hearty and relaxed friendship. Despite the immense success of Werther, it did not bring Goethe much financial gain because copyright laws at the time were essentially non-existent. Early years in Weimar in 1775, Goethe was invited, on the strength of his fame as the author of The Sorrows of Young Werther, to the court of Karl August, Duke of Saxe Weimar Eisenach, who would become Grand Duke in 1815. Goethe thus went to live in Weimar, where he remained for the rest of his life and where, over the course of many years, he held a succession of offices, becoming the Duke's chief advisor. In 1776, Goethe formed a close relationship to Charlotte von Stein, an older, married woman. The intimate bond with Frau von Stein lasted for ten years, after which Goethe abruptly left for Italy without giving his companion any notice. She was emotionally distraught at the time, but they were eventually reconciled. Goethe, aside from official duties, was also a friend and confidant to the Duke, and participated fully in the activities of the court. For Goethe, his first ten years at Weimar could well be described as a garnering of a degree and range of experience which perhaps could be achieved in no other way. Goethe was ennobled in 1782. Italy Goethe's journey to the Italian peninsula and Sicily from 1786 to 1788 was of great significance in his aesthetic and philosophical development. His father had made a similar journey during his own youth, and his example was a major motivating factor for Goethe to make the trip. More importantly, however, the work of Johann Joachim Winkelmann had provoked a general renewed interest in the classical art of ancient Greece and Rome. Thus Goethe's journey had something of the nature of a pilgrimage to it. During the course of his trip Goethe met and befriended the artists Angelica Kaufmann and Johann Heinrich Wilhelm Tischbein, as well as encountering such notable characters as Lady Hamilton and Alessandro Cagliostro. He also journeyed to Sicily during this time, and wrote intriguingly that, to have seen Italy without having seen Sicily is to not have seen Italy at all, for Sicily is the clue to everything. While in southern Italy and Sicily, Goethe encountered, for the first time genuine Greek architecture, and was quite startled by its relative simplicity. Winkelmann had not recognized the distinctness of the two styles. Goethe's diaries of this period form the basis of the non-fiction Italian journey. Italian journey only covers the first year of Goethe's visit. The remaining year is largely undocumented, aside from the fact that he spent much of it in Venice. This gap in the record has been the source of much speculation over the years. In the decades which immediately followed its publication in 1816 Italian Journey inspired countless German youths to follow Goethe's example. This is pictured, somewhat satirically, in George Eliot's Middle March. Weimar in late 1792, Goethe took part in the Battle of Valmy against revolutionary France, assisting Duke Karl August of Saxe-Weimar during the failed invasion of France. Again during the Siege of Mainz he assisted Karl August as a military observer. His written account of these events can be found within his complete works. In 1794 Friedrich Schiller wrote to Goethe offering friendship, they had previously had only a mutually wary relationship ever since first becoming acquainted in 1788. 
This collaborative friendship lasted until Schiller's death in 1805. In 1806, Goethe was living in Weimar with his mistress Christiane Volpius, the sister of Christian A. Volpius and their son Julius August Walter von Goethe. On 13 October, Napoleon's army invaded the town. The French, spoon guards, the least disciplined soldiers, occupied Goethe's house. The spoon guards had broken in, they had drunk wine, made a great uproar and called for the master of the house. Goethe's secretary Rima reports, although already undressed and wearing only his wide nightgown, he descended the stairs towards them and inquired what they wanted from him. His dignified figure, commanding respect, and his spiritual mien seemed to impress even them, but it was not to last long. Late at night they burst into his bedroom with drawn bayonets. Goethe was petrified, Christiane raised a lot of noise and even tangled with them. Other people who had taken refuge in Goethe's house rushed in, and so the marauders eventually withdrew again. It was Christiane who commanded and organized the defense of the house on the Frauen plan. The barricading of the kitchen and the cellar against the wild pillaging soldiery was her work. Goethe noted in his diary, Fires, rapine, a frightful night. Preservation of the house through steadfastness and luck. The luck was Goethe's, the steadfastness was displayed by Christiane, Schopenhauer and the wild years of philosophy, ch. Five days afterward, on 19 October 1806, Goethe legitimized their 18-year relationship by marrying Christiane in a quiet marriage service at the Jakobskirche in Weimar. They had already had several children together by this time, including their son, Julius August Walter von Goethe, whose wife, Ottilie von Pogwisch, cared for the elder Goethe until his death in 1832. The younger couple had three children, Walther, Prior von Goethe, Wolfgang, Prior von Goethe and Alma von Goethe. Christiane von Goethe died in 1816. Later life after 1793, Goethe devoted his endeavors primarily to literature. By 1820, Goethe was on amiable terms with Caspar Maria von Sternberg. In 1823, having recovered from a near-fatal heart illness, Goethe fell in love with Ulrich von Levetzo whom he wanted to marry, but because of the opposition of her mother he never proposed. Their last meeting in Carlsbad on 5 September 1823 inspired him to the famous Marienbad elegy which he considered one of his finest works. During that time he also developed a deep emotional bond with the Polish pianist Maria Agata Zymanowska. Death in 1832, Goethe died in Weimar of apparent heart failure. His last words, according to his doctor Karl Vogel, were, Merlicht. But this is disputed as Vogel was not in the room at the moment Goethe died. He is buried in the ducal vault at Weimar's historical cemetery. Ekman closes his famous work, Conversations with Goethe, with this passage. The morning after Goethe's death, a deep desire seized me to look once again upon his earthly garment. His faithful servant, Frederick, opened for me the chamber in which he was laid out. Stretched upon his back, he reposed as if asleep. Profound peace and security reigned in the features of his sublimely noble countenance. The mighty brow seemed yet to harbor thoughts. I wished for a lock of his hair, but reverence prevented me from cutting it off. The body lay naked, only wrapped in a white sheet. Large pieces of ice had been placed near it, to keep it fresh as long as possible. Frederick drew aside the sheet, and I was astonished at the divine magnificence of the limbs. The breast was powerful, broad, and arched, the arms and thighs were elegant, and of the most perfect shape, nowhere, on the whole body, was there a trace of either fat or of leanness and decay. A perfect man lay in great beauty before me, and the rapture, the sight, caused me made me forget for a moment that the immortal spirit had left such an abode. I laid my hand on his heart, there was a deep silence, and I turned away to give free vent to my suppressed tears. The first production of Richard Wagner's opera Lohengrin took place in Weimar in 1850. 
The conductor was Franz Liszt, who chose the date the 28th of August in honor of Goethe, who was born on the 28th of August 1749.